Mill Serp Garage. Thought it'd be interesting to just do a video on loading N block clips and how to load an M1 Grand. And uh, the reason is because within the past, I'd say six months, I saw at least three different occasions at the range where I saw some, uh, you know, poor dudes. Once it was like, and, and, and it wasn't like any specific age range because once it was a couple of younger dudes, um, the second time it was a couple of middle-aged dudes, and then the third time it was a couple of older dudes that were all struggling with loading the end blocks. I saw a couple of like near misses where fingers were almost taken off, loading the grand and everything. And I realized maybe there is a, I didn't look on YouTube. I always hate to do that, to look ahead because I can look ahead and see like three awesome videos and then be like, oh, forget it, I'm not doing a video. You know, it'll like, it'll ruin it for me. So I don't even look. But I'm assuming there's some kind of videos on YouTube about how to load an M1 Grand because it is kind of unique um, and, the, and the end block clips. But I figured I was just going to do one regardless. And then, uh, you know, maybe it would uh, help out. Maybe you guys that are veterans here that know about this stuff whatever might even uh, find some interest in just me you know gapping about it and stuff um but of the people who are new to this and you're coming upon this video i've probably talked so much already that you've already tuned out but who knows maybe you hung in there first of all um i love this company these guys kind of like endorse me there's no money changing hands between me and this company i promise you it's not like um, i have a monetary thing with them or whatever but i figure if uh, YouTube is going to demonetize my videos and run no ads on them uh, for places that I don't even know about or necessarily even care about, I might as well um, talk about a company that I think is awesome. And I like to play with my guns. You know what I mean? I like to like take them out and look at how they work and, and take them apart and analyze them and run rounds through them and see exactly how the designer got it to pick up from the magazine and, and chamber and how it extracts them and how it, I love to watch that. That's what really turned me on to these firearms to begin with. With some people it's hunting, with some people it's like, how good can my groups be? With some people it's reloading and they obsess over different reloading things. That's part of their hobby with the shooting. With me, um, I love to shoot them, but when I'm shooting them, I, it's fully in my head of exactly what's going on inside the gun to make that happen you know and I love the mechanics of it I love that the engineering kind of angle that's what I like so because of that I have to have something to cycle through the guns and play with them and trust me live ammo is not the way to go I remember from the get-go what was drilled in me by my dad was uh, we had guns around and his thing was I see that you like to play with this stuff. So you can play with it all you want. I'll show you where this stuff is. You know where it is. You could play, but here's the rule. The rule is you could play with the gun all you want, but then you never touch the ammo. The ammo stays in its spot. If you want to play with the ammo, the gun goes in the case, zipped up back where it was. Then you could take out the ammo and you can play with the ammo all you want. And even that for a kid playing with live ammo could even be dicey. I mean, even you could drop around and it could just land just just so on something to set it off or whatever. Who knows? The ammo wasn't necessarily the safest thing to mess with. Um, but and also because semi jacketed bullets have exposed lead and you don't want to be getting that on your hands and just if you mess with the ammo too much, then when you go to use it, it might not actually work because messing up, messing around with the cases and banging around and shaking them around can actually change the powder inside. It could break up the powder and change the burn characteristics and then change the pressures and everything like that. There's so much involved. The best thing to do is right here. Check this out. Realistic snap caps. I love this company. They revolutionized how I get to play with my guns because I don't have to deal with aluminum crappy snap caps or plasticky ones. Trust me, before we even move into the how to reload and how to do that, if you're going to be messing around and training and learning, spend the $30 right here, ladies and gentlemen. And here's what I did. I specifically picked this moment 
to show you about these snap caps because this is an, the, one of their most expensive purchases because this particular um, order right here, this particular item number comes with eight 3006 rounds and an end block clip. So this is specifically made for grand people. You know what I mean? Usually these come in groups of five, but this guy, this company, this guy in charge of this company is such an enthusiast. You could tell that this guy is a fan. He's like me and you because you could tell he knows about these guns. Like for instance, I bought the 7.5 by 55 rounds. What are those? They're the Swiss rounds, right? For the K31, the Schmidt Rubin, right? I bought them. Six of them came in the package. Six of them. I'm like, oh, what is it? Accidentally put an extra one in here. And then I realized, no, the Schmidt Rubin takes six rounds. So he knows enough to make that package six rounds without even charging any extras. The same as any of the others, but he gives you the six because that's what that gun takes. That's what I like about this guy, that he'll he'll offer a deal like this. He knows that eight of them come for someone that wants a grand and they want to like do drills with that grand. They need eight of these things. They don't need five. So they don't have to buy two two sets of five and then find an end block clip. If they really just beginners, this is where to go. You get your end block clip and eight rounds to mess around with for 30 bucks. If you check the description um, below, you're going to see there's a discount code Millsurf Garage for 10% off. So that's three bucks off. So that's, what does that make? $16.99? $16.99. I'm sorry. $26. Sorry. $26.99. And this guy does not charge shipping. Gotcha. This company does not charge shipping charges. So $26.99 shipped to your door for eight of these in an end block clip. I have paid close to that for shipping buying something i've bought ammo before or stuff like that where shipping could be 20 25 bucks or whatever you know what i mean so um this is a great deal and i picked this expensive one they're not all like this if you go back and you check how much just five rounds are without an end block clip whatever most of them are like 20 bucks 17.99 you know they're like they're much cheaper and you still get the 10 percent off well anyway i digress this is what you need to get and if you check here I talk about these things all the time and like I can never fully even enunciate. I'm not like a good, I can't, I would never be able to do a good infomercial because me even talking about these things, I'm like stumbling over my words. I can't even remember all the cool things about these, but this is the basic deal with these things is that this guy knows exactly what to make for exactly what you're doing. It's not like just some crappy company that just throws together aluminum ones or plastic ones and just throws five in a package no matter what gun it's for, no matter what you're doing, and there's just five in a package and that's it. And they're and they're cheap and they're gonna be destroyed in like, you know, a couple of hours of doing drills, the things are chewed up. Not these things. These things have this black stop primer that this guy trademarked that's made of like silicone and the firing pin. It's that I've I have some uh, examples of these snap caps that I've beat the crap out of for a year and that it looks like that thing would fall out right away. They're still in there. I mean, it's like it, the, 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 the silicone thing is still in the primer pocket. And yeah, do they get chewed up? Do they get worn out? I suppose eventually they would get worn out. But um, they take a serious beating. And uh, it would be years before you'd have, have to ever replace these things. And, uh, and you, would, you would gladly come back here to replace them. Trust me. Uh, and we're going to check them out in a minute. But I just wanted you to to see, um, you know, just the look look at these things. Look at the the quality of them. See, these rounds are bonded into the case. This isn't just like a regular round. You can just take a brass and just squeeze a bullet into it. But like I said, it's going to be made of lead. You got to worry about lead contamination. And um, after a while of cycling them, you're going to leave behind one of these bullets inside the chamber. I promise you, they start to loosen up doesn't take long they're only made to chamber once really you know what i mean a bullet but these things are bonded in there so uh that's not an issue and you don't want those bullets staying behind in the chamber because if you don't notice it you get a little like uh brandon lee crow action going on there and uh bad things can happen well so anyway 
Uh, let's move to the table, and I'm going to show you uh, a good procedure to use to load up the um, end block clip, and uh, a couple little pointers about uh, how that works. All right, at the table. So here we go. Here's our end block clip, our 3006 realistic snap cap inert rounds, and. Uh, our hands. Here's how we're going to do this now. This is a properly loaded end block clip. And take a look. They might all look the same. This is the only way that it's right. Now you have to pay attention when you load these. You have to pay attention because this rim that you see along here, see how there's the rims of the bullet? There's a reason why this has this rimmed edge to the end block. It's because the rims from the rounds, as you can see, they have to sit, all of them, inside of this rim. That's why when you stand it up straight, they have to all be perfectly in there so that there isn't one sticking out. And you could tell by like, laying this card across the top. If one of those was higher than any of the others, the card would fall off. That's how it should end. You should actually also be able to take the end block and stand it up like that on its end. Which, like I said, if there was one sticking out, you wouldn't be able to do that. And that's very important. We're going to take a look later, and I'm going to show you what. But let's break this down. Let's uh, back up a little bit. Let's take this down. Actually, this is this is the issue that I see um, a lot of people doing. I see that people on a table, a lot of people that load these things, they use a table to hold them in place and to go like this. And the problem is that at the range sometimes you just you have a handful of ammo and an end block, and you put in a position where just with your hands you have to load them. And then, because you don't have the table, one at a time, there's just a lot of fumbling going on. I'm just going to quickly show you my method. And also, following this method in such a way that each round has to end up inside that rim that's in the back. That's very important. The first step is to take three rounds in your hand. Okay? And you just put them in there. It doesn't matter how. They're, they're automatically going to fall into place the way they're supposed to go. And when you just apply a little bit of pressure. So you see I'm applying a little bit of pressure down. And they're just falling into place where they should be. Then you come through the top. And you hold those into place with your index finger. Now we want to make sure that those rounds are all the way back. See this one is not. So you just want to... And if, see, I'm glad that that happened, because if you lose one, it's okay. It's probably because it wasn't inside that rim in the back. So, there we go. Get all three sight down here, and just make sure when you're looking at it that they're all the same length. Now you know that they're all inside this rim back here. See it? Now, you just take each individual round, you slide it into place and replace your finger... You make sure you hear that click. You went all the way back past that rim. And you have to do that with each one. You just keep raising your finger up higher. All the way back. Hear that click? Past that rim again. Next one. Then it goes, kind of goes next to it, you know. All the way back. Click. And push down. Again, all the way back. And that click. So now you're going to end up like this. This is the moment of truth right here. You're going to take the last round, you're going to put it on top. You add pressure now, that's just holding everything in now. You're going to go all the way back. Because this one, you're not going to be able to click. If you click this in, if you push down right now, it'll click it to place. But it's going to be hard, maybe, to push it past that rim. Not always, but sometimes it's hard to push it past that rim. So what you do now is you just line it up by sight. So you make sure you've got it all the way to the back where that rim is right inside where that recess is in the end block. And you snap the last one into place. Did it go? 
looks like it might be a little ahead. No, it's in there, see? And then you take another look around again. You make sure you don't have a high one, like I said. And you could just test each one out by just dropping a card at the top. That's perfectly loaded. The reason why it has to be loaded that way, I'll show you right now. Barump. So then we got our we got our M1 Grand here now. If you see, if I just drop this into place right here, where it's got to go, how much room is there up in front for a round sticking out? Not much room. And that's going to screw up even how it loads. Like, in the midst of... I'm not even going to waste time, like, sitting it up that way and showing you. Um, I'm, I'm definitely in-depth enough here. You mess around with it. You see what happens if you leave one sticking out. You practice this way. They'll show you at the range those hang-ups that people have. People have hang-ups with the M1 Grand, and they go, like, Arr! they say stuff like about the rifle, and it's like, well, it's, yeah, see, it's not perfect. And I'm like, you got to load these end blocks right. That's the bottom line. you got to load them right. Now, when you push this down, here's where the issue comes with this, uh, this Grand Thumb. Um, there's two schools of thought here. One is always be in control of your bolt handle. See this bolt handle right here. This is your savior right here. This is everything. This will, this will always stop any issues from having just in this position right here. I could do anything. I could stick my finger in here. I could put my pinky. I could, I could press the follower side to side. I can put my thumb up and down, up and down. I can push it all the way in to the bottom. I can do anything as long as I'm controlling this bolt, with this uh, bolt handle right here, which is basically controlling the op rod, basically. But the second that you're not controlling this, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to do. I'm even afraid to do that. But uh, the second that you're not controlling this bolt handle, anything can happen here with, uh, there you go. Man, that would really ruin your day. So, there's two schools of thought here. If you can push this down and get out of the way fast enough to not get nailed, God bless you. I see people do it all the time where they just shove their, their finger in here like this, whatever, but... And it comes home a little slower when it's got a feet around. But to tell you the truth, I'm more comfortable holding this and releasing my hand first. And then letting that, uh, letting that first round go in. For the most part, the bolt will hold up on that top round like that if you do it gentle like that. And you could just tap it or, or hit the, uh, hit the operate, operating rod to chamber it. So then, uh, yeah, so look at how they'll, they'll feed now. Oops, what happened there? Oh, you know what? I didn't, uh, my fault, because you do have to let it slam closed like that to be able to pick up the round. That's one thing about the Grand. You can't ride it home like that because uh, it will not pick up the round. It has to hit home hard to pick up the round. So don't laugh at me right there. That was my fault. Um, you always have to let go with the Grand and let it, that's the only time it'll pick up the round. So you see how each one of these, you see how smooth they're feeding when they're coming out of that end block clip. Should I show you what happens if it's not, uh, if it's not done right? Or should I just leave it to you to explore and uh, check out on your own? Hmm. That's a good question. All right, let's do it. <laughs> so this is what I see a lot. And I'm still going to use the, uh, you know, without the table method. But guys, they'll, they'll just line them up in here like this. And then they'll just take these and they just lay them on top. Lay another one on top, another one on top. And they'll just go like that and they'll go, there you go. It's a, it's a loaded end block clip. They're all in there. Look at that. Look at the roller coaster going on right here. And... If you use my little test, where's my, uh, my business card? See, you won't be able to lay the card on the top now. So how are you going to do that? 
and you're not going to be able to stand it up either. It's just not going to happen because that's the shape you're dealing with. Watch the difference here. Hold my up rod. I can't even, I can't even get this in. You see what's happening, right? Up front here. And I see this kind of struggling going on at the rim. This, this is as far as I'm getting right here because of this. Let's see if I can push him in a little bit more by just shoving this down. Maybe I can at least get it in the gun. Oh, oh, it's jammed. It's jammed though. Oh. Well, you know what? I didn't even get as far as watching how bad the round cycle or don't cycle is more like it because of how they're not put in. And you can't fix it at this point. It's impossible. You have to, you have to yank around. If you want to load them all sloppy, if you want to load them all sloppy like that, you can, I guess. And then at the end, you'd have to check each individual one, make sure they're behind. I've done that too. Now, what do we got now? Here we go. Now, now we're chambered. Here we go. Millsurf Garage coming at you. Some tidbits and tips. Yo, check these guys out. Seriously. Realisticsnapcaps.com makes all this possible without cringing that one of those is going to get caught in a weird way. You saw when I didn't properly when I didn't properly feed that one how it was uh, bullet tipped to primer. You saw that before, right? Mm-hmm. I know you know what that means. All right, I'll see you all soon. We're going to come back in with... Uh, I think I'm just going to take just a random rifle and just do a... Uh, a part two on it then i got a cool new pistol and then i got like an ammo video i want to do for you some for some real cool russian ammo got a lot going on spring is here i see a lot of good things on the horizon so stay tuned thanks for uh my loyal subscribers you guys are making some awesome comments with some real food for thought on the uh, especially on like the is it tactical video <laughs> a lot of controversy there um, but I like talking about that. And a friend of mine was like, I'm sorry, bro, but that gun is anything but tactical. <laughs> That's what he said. And this guy's a firearms instructor. So I kind of felt like, am I really going down the right road? But you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to go down the road. That's it. I'm just going to put the blinders on and just tread into crazy territory. So stick with me. Uh, subscribe, like, hit the heart button, notifications, whatever the hell is going to get these videos on your screen and YouTube off my back. Later, all.